Hi, welcome to What's Happening at Tri-City Medical Center. I am Kelly Davis and I will be your host for this series made in collaboration with KOCT, North County's channel, and Tri-City Medical Center. Our goal is to keep you informed about health issues, events, and services at your local hospital and to provide you with information for a healthy lifestyle. With us is Dr. Penbos Yi, a board certified OBGYN affiliated with Tri-City Medical Center. Her experience spans both coasts and the Midwest. She relocated to San Diego to create her vision of a women's wellness center that values the patient as a whole. Her office services women throughout their life. She is here today to talk about women's health after menopause. Welcome, Dr. Prinvos Yi. Thank you very much, nice to be here. Well, the first question is to ask, what is menopause? But I know from my grandmother's day, just kinda, mm -hmm. that they used to talk about going through the change. Is right. this the same thing we're talking it about? It is the same thing. There's a lot of definitions you can use, but the change is the perimenopause and the menopause and, and that tr transition that happens from the start of symptoms to the last period to Hopefully, in most cases, the symptoms going away, but not in all cases. So there's this um, this idea, or I don't know if I want to say wives' tale. I don't even know if that's politically correct to say uh -huh. that anymore. That back in the day, they sort of attributed menopause with the change and going crazy. Right, the hysteria that's associated with it. Why? Why? Why was that? What? Well, uh, you know, menopause. Part of menopause is you do with your hormonal change. You can get emotional change. Sleep deprivation is one of those things, and sometimes it's just because we're getting up to go to the bathroom a million times a night. That's a new symptom that, as our vaginal tissue dries up, that can happen too. Um, now, of course, you know a lot of the famous doctors out there talk about the wisdom of menopause. Um, oh. Some of us kind of figure out what's important and what's not important too. So. There's definitely pros and cons to it, but I, I, I agree with the wisdom of menopause, but we definitely have some things that we can help women to transition through it a little bit nicer. Because in essence, with menopause, because we're talking about hormones right, right. and all of these things centered around this menopause, this change right. that you go through, right. that's chemical It's chemical, stuff, yeah, right? and our body is just a big machine, you know, that chemicals take care of managing. So when those chemicals change, it changes a lot of things in our body, you know, mind, physical, emotional, uh, all sorts of things. So you said, we talked about menopause, so what is this perimenopause? So perimenopause is usually the, the, the years leading up to menopause. Hmm. I always tell people the average age of menopause is approximately 51, 52. The perimenopause is the time around menopause, commonly up to five years before our actual last period happens. Um, we might start having some of the symptoms that we attribute to menopause. Um, we might have the hot flashes, the night sweats, um, we might have the associated mood swings, we might find that our bladder is a little more irritable, we might get up more often at nighttime to go to the bathroom, um, pain with intercourse, drier vaginal tissues, all of those things can be associated with menopause. And I, um, is it true, because this is something else I heard, and we hear so, this is why I'm so happy to have you on the show, doctor, <laughs> because you hear all these things that go on with women and women issue. Is it true that if a woman has had um, a hysterectomy uh, earlier on in her life for whatever medical reason, you know, whether she's in her 30s or even mm -hmm. 20s, can they go through this menopause earlier than? So they can. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, part of the blood supply to our ovaries comes through the uterus. So uh, hysterectomy or even tying your tubes can cause your menopause to happen a little bit earlier. Um, it's shown to happen. So a year or two earlier, when we give women a hysterectomy, that's what we usually tell them. You might get your menopause a year or two earlier than, than you were going to get it. So some of the symptoms that you talked about was, you know, the hot flashes, that's what seems to be quite simply show it in all the movies. That's uh, right. the time. Right, I had it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the Ooh, you know, and you're just sitting there and out of the blue, the heat comes and hits you. So um, that, and, and there's a lot of women who can relate to that. When, how would you know, I guess it's, it's simply that you'd have to go to a healthcare professional like yourself. How do you know it's a hot flash for sure? In, that you're going through this thing, right. this yeah. change. So you want to talk about it with your doctors. You want to talk to them about all the symptoms you're having. Um, of course, you can Google it and look online, but it's nice to have someone to talk to 
and see like, boy, do you think that this is part of it? I mean, we can have the menstrual irregularity, but some women don't get that. Some women have their periods right up to their last period, but they also have hot flashes and night sweats and all those things happening on the way to that last period. Okay, so besides menstrual cycle changes, what are some of those other signs? And we've kind of alluded to them. Yeah the hot flashes, the night sweats, or just getting warmer. You might notice that, okay, I used to be able to wear this, but now I can't wear this anymore because I get hot when I'm wearing it. Mm -hmm. um, you might notice that you're more uncomfortable down below, a little itchy, or mm -hmm. when you have intercourse, it's drier, it's more painful. Some people mm -hmm. almost stop having intercourse altogether because of the vaginal dryness symptoms. Um, you know, the hysteria, our mood changes. Mm -hmm. we're, we're tired, sometimes we're getting up more at night to go to the bathroom. Um, just the hormones alone can change our moods and kind of, we can look at it as clarity or we can look at it as hysteria. <laughs> I'm going for clarity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and do these symptoms continue after menopause? And I guess more importantly, does it, when does it end and when do we know that it ends yeah. maybe? So I like to counsel my patient um, menopause is your last period. Postmenopause is 12 months after your last period. So um, if you've gone a full 12 months without a period, you are officially menopausal. It is not normal to bleed past that point. You need to see a doctor if you're bleeding 12 months past your last period. That is, that is one thing that's really important to know for cancer prevention. Mm. Um, but some women uh, may have symptoms leading up to menopause and they have last period, they feel better, or those symptoms may carry on past that last period. Unfortunately, for some of us, those symptoms can last a lifetime almost. Um, diet and exercise are definitely an important first line therapy to optimize your healthy diet and exercise regimen. Um, but then we talk about all the treatments like hormonal treatments, non-hormonal treatments to deal with the hot flash, the night sweats, decreased sex drive. Um, there's topical uh, hormone therapies for vaginal dryness. We now have new laser therapy for vaginal dryness for those women who can't have the hormones or the hormones don't work for them or they can't afford the hormones. Mm. Um, i trying to think what else we talked about. Well, along these same lines, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a former uh, athlete and I remember when I was younger, some of the distance runners, for example, they wouldn't get their periods, obviously, they're right, not in right, danger. Right, they had such of, a lean body mass, exactly. And as a woman, I find when you talk to other women, we have have our cycles change and, and we're not sure what this is or what that right, is. Right. How do you, is it just you have to get a good healthcare professional? I mean, how do you know when you're really, this right. is... So yeah, yeah, and so we're gonna have menstrual changes around menopause, when do we need to worry about them? We need to worry about them if our periods are coming more frequently. So if every month we're having two periods, we need to worry. If we skip a period here and there and we know we're, we're in our mid to late 40s and we're around that time, an occasional skip period, and we know we're not pregnant, that's okay. But if we're having frequent periods or if we're spotting all the time, bleeding after intercourse, those are reasons to see your healthcare provider before your routine well woman exam. We have about a, uh, about a minute, I believe. Um, vaginal atrophy, Right. what is that? So vaginal atrophy is when our vaginal tissue, whether it's postpartum, breastfeeding, birth control pill, postmenopausal, loses its vaginal estrogen, it loses its hydration, it loses its elasticity. That can cause bladder symptoms, that can cause pain with intercourse, that can just cause general irritation. Okay. And so in the past we've had Traditional treatments are vaginal estrogen and over-the-counter lubricants, which work for some people, but for, not for all people. I was really excited to find that there's a new laser treatment out called the Mona Lisa Touch Vaginal Laser. I got very excited. I describe myself as a bread and butter OBGYN. I don't usually get excited by all this fancy stuff, but when they came to me with this, I got very excited because there's a lot of women out there who either don't respond to the vaginal estrogens, don't tolerate the vaginal estrogens, can't have the vaginal estrogens. So now we're lucky enough to have the Mona Lisa Touch and it is good for your bladder, it's good for your sex life, it's good for the vaginal dryness and your overall vaginal health. And we wanna stay on top of our vaginal health, we wanna to talk to our doctors about it every year when we go see them. We wanna keep that tissue healthy and not let it get into such a state of disrepair that it's hard to reverse the changes that have happened. Well, we're gonna talk more about that in a moment and uh, we'll be right back. Tri-City Medical Center, a leader in advanced healthcare close to home. When I first came to San Diego and needed a doctor, 
I found Dr. Ferber. That was 30 years ago, and since that day, Dr. Ferber has cared for Kathy's family. Over time, they have dealt with some stressful medical concerns. I don't know how we'd have gotten through our health care issues if it weren't for Dr. Ferber and Tri-City Medical Center. What I love most about my practice is that we become family. Dr. Ferber just really cares. Tri-City Medical Center, advanced health care for you. Hi, welcome to what's happening at Tri-City Medical Center. With us is Dr. Penbos Yi, a board certified OBGYN affiliated with Tri-City Medical Center. Her experience spans both coasts and the Midwest. She is here today to talk about women's health after menopause and managing symptoms. Well, welcome doctor. Thank you. Why is it so hard or why do women still feel something about talking about their vaginas and even saying the word vagina it's right. almost it's not a four-letter word even right what's that about well I definitely think there's a generation that just definitely did not talk about it at all and then um, nowadays I, I just don't know if it's well first of all it's a health issue too mm -hmm. so and not everybody does a good job taking care of ourselves we kind of put ourselves especially women we put ourselves as last in health care we take care of our kids we take care of our husband we take care of the pets in the house we take <laughs> care of our job but we don't even think to take care of ourselves and so and then when you talk to people about it they don't know a lot, a lot about it so either they'll, they'll kind of say well yeah that's just the way it is and it's not really that important or you know I don't really know anything about it and then it just gets awkward and nobody wants to talk about it Mm -hmm. We joke in our office all the time that we love vaginas. <laughs> so <laughs> come to Radiance, we want to make sure your whole body's healthy from head to toe, including, including your vagina. And, and talking about uh, your, your vagina and some of the things that accompany it, it like uh, discharges yes. and things. Yes. And I hear these horror stories, for example, and not just with, with menopause, but that there's some changes that happens to our bodies yes. that we see even right. with the discharge and they're right. they're so afraid to right and who wants to go to an OBGYN right <laughs> I mean I mean we I, I, the joke is who's who do you like to see less your dentist or your OBGYN doctor right <laughs> so <laughs> but so how bad is it that you're gonna come and see me about it if it's just not your well exam right that's okay. that's the question and you know, one of the things with menopausal discharge, it's, it's a discharge because there's an absence of normal healthy tissue there. And a lot of older women will come and think that there's something really wrong with them, that they have an infection. And we really just have to do a lot of teaching that it's not an infection, it's just that the tissues are aging and we need to treat them. So okay. they go back to a healthy discharge. Okay, and, and can vaginal moisturizers or lubricants, speaking of that, help with that? So absolutely or? they can. So there's. Uh, two typical treatments that we've used for vaginal dryness and, and getting the flora, it's, a, it's, it's bacteria, you know, from our mouth down through the out part there yes. and anything that's the outside of our body, which can even be the inside of our body, has a normal bacteria, a normal yeast, yeast and normal flora that lives there and it has to stay in balance and as we age that balance gets lost. And so um, we can do vaginal estrogens because of course uh, when we've been breastfeeding or postpartum or menopausal, we lose that estrogen and the estrogen is a big important part of all of our skin, including the tissue in the vagina. And that estrogen helps to bring back elasticity and hydration in the area. Um, for most women it works, but not for all women. Um, also there's uh, over-the-counter lubricants um, that you can use the types you have with intercourse and then there's now vaginal prebiotics and vaginal biotics that we can put in and again that helps get the floor back in order helps get our pH back in order mm -hmm. and hopefully make that a nicer environment and then finally a newer treatment because those treatments aren't always successful is the vaginal laser um, to help rejuvenate the tissue in the vagina to use our own body's natural healing mechanisms to heal that tissue and make it healthy and younger again and I know that, well, at least I heard, again, all of this thing, we hear all these things about your vagina and yes. healthcare, and you start Googling things, but yes. I hear things like taking, um, uh, uh, was it, they find this in yogurt, I don't know if it's lactose bacillus. Right, so the prebiotics or the, or the vaginal probiotics, yes. Do you find this helpful for uh, women who are peri or menopausal to? So generally, healthy diet is important, but uh, it's been my experience that eating the yogurt isn't going to fix it. I've even heard of people putting yogurt inside. I've heard of that too. Yep, yep. So it's not common. 
Um, but now they sell nice over-the-counter products that have uh, the prebiotics or the probiotics in there and that they can be inserted vaginally as a, as a like a gel. Mm -hmm. And so, and those can be very helpful in some cases. So you always want to do the minimal, minimal amount you need to get the greatest success in recovery or rejuvenation uh, for a patient. So for some people, that's all they need. They have the tissues overall, it's held up pretty well for them and they just need something to maintain it. And when we speak about vaginal dryness, obviously uh, a woman who is married and has sexual intercourse, it's mm -hmm. probably pretty clear that they're not as lubricated as they once right. were. Absolutely, and this can seriously affect our relationships. Um, when we're not able to have comfortable intercourse with our partners, that's a, that's a big deal. And, and we're not even always comfortable talking about with our partners, and that, or if our partners know that we're uncomfortable with intercourse, then they feel bad, and that changes the dynamic of the relationship. And, and if they don't know what to do or don't know where to go, um, it can cause problems that shouldn't even have to happen. And, a sim and the symptoms of vaginal dryness seems to be very clear, but if you're a woman who happens to be celibate and uh, mm -hmm. not married, absolutely, absolutely. how would you know that you are, uh, I don't know, suffering from vaginal dryness? Absolutely. To, yeah. So we can have where our bladder becomes more irritated. Um, you have like more often you have bladder infections mm. or you go to the bathroom more often. Now there's other things that can contribute to those issues as well but dry vaginal tissue is one of them. If you think about it, our bladder lives above our vagina, lives above our rectum. So if the tissue in here is not healthy and it's dry, the bladder that lives above it gets irritated. Um, and if we don't have that healthy flora down there, um, the bacteria that live around the opening to the entrance to the bladder, can the, the bad bacteria can overgrow and get into the bladder and cause a bladder infection. Is it, um, I don't know if the word is safe to say, but if you are going through, um, if you're having Vag, um, excuse me, bladder infections. Mm -hmm. Can that be? So you're saying that it, could absolutely. be? Absolutely. One of the indications for the vaginal laser that we have at our office, the Mona Lisa Touch, is that it can decrease the re uh, frequency of bladder infections for some people. And I've seen really nice success in that in that area. Okay. And what are bioidentical hormones? <laughs> so I'm an ex-chemist. So I, <laughs> I think that, you know, I think that hormones are hormones. So there's bioidentical just means it's from more natural sources like plants. Um, they do the same things as hormones that we der derive from a more chemical means or um, you know, isolation from other sources. Um, but some people feel that they're more natural and, and, and I do believe that. You know, there's like these receptors we have where the estrogen comes in and hits the receptor and maybe the bio bioidentical ones just fit a little bit more and make some people a little more comfortable. Um, so I work with both a prescriptive and bioidentical hormones, and indeed some hormones are prescriptive and bioidentical, but they're more natural hormones that, that, that people use. So less, I don't know, less chemically involved, yes. and, but is that still, you still take it like in a form of a pill? Are you, how do so you administer uh, most that? Most of the bioidenticals are topical, topical creams oh. or gels, there's one that's a spray. Huh. Um, there are pellets that they make, there's some, I don't do the pellets, but some people uh, will do the pellets or little injected pellets that have a delayed release of that hormone. Okay, and is there a way to prevent menopause system, sy symptoms? Well, you know there is, and this is, this is a tough one, and, and, and everybody deals with this, but healthy diet and exercise is the first line treatment. Of course, mm -hmm. none of us want to hear that, including myself. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the healthier, our, the more natural and healthier our, our food is, and the more we exercise, and it doesn't have to be really intense exercise, it just has to be regular walking, some regular athletic activity, um, and in keeping ourselves at a healthy body weight, that will help with the decreasing the menopausal symptoms of the hot flashes, the night sweats, the sex drive, and all of those things. That's the first line treatment. Okay. Well, well, thank you, doctor. And if you want further information on women's health at Tri City Medical Center, please visit tricitymed.org. Tri City Medical Center, a leader in advanced healthcare close to home. By 2007, I'd completed eight Ironman races, but a ruptured herniated disc caused me debilitating pain. Kathleen McCartney, winner of the 1982 Ironman Triathlon World Championship, has conquered the event considered to be the most grueling single day sporting competition in the world. I performed a micro discectomy on Kathleen. Her surgery was a success, and she returned to feeling pain free. I was feeling good, but I stopped running. I didn't want to risk reliving all the pain I'd just been through. Over time, that changed, and her focus turned to competing again. I needed to rediscover my strength, 
With Dr. Lean's support, I started to train again for the event that I won 30 years earlier. I worked with Kathleen to help her strengthen her core and make sure she remained injury free. She turned her adversity into triumph. Thank you Tri-City Medical Center for giving me my life back and for the incredible orthopedic work that you do. Tri-City Medical Center, advanced healthcare for you. Hello and welcome to What's Happening at Tri-City Medical Center. With us is Dr. Penbos Yi, a board certified OBGYN affiliated with Tri-City Medical Center. She is here today to talk about women's health after menopause and the Mona Lisa Touch treatment. Welcome, Dr. Prinvos Yi. I like saying your name. <laughs> Thank you. This is very nice. Nice being here. <laughs> <laughs> so the Mona, I'm going to even read, the Mona Lisa Vaginal Laser. Right. What is that? So just like we laser our face to get the tissue healthy and elastic again, it's actually a laser that goes in your vagina to act, and the outside of the opening to the vagina that gets that tissue healthy again and gets it elastic and gets... Uh, the hydration back to it and the I have to, I'm looking this way because whenever I hear laser you hear about laser this right, laser that and I'm right. like do I want a laser because you're gonna go right. inside there right, right. You know? we like to we like to think of a as light energy in the vaginal tissue that it's kind of like a small local irritation that causes our body to say hey what's going on there and then it sends all of our um, our helpers in to, to re-stimulate natural, healthy tissue growth. So this laser treatment stimulates your... Like your fibrin and your elastin to, to regrow in that area. So before, you know, when the tissue is dry and unhealthy and, and low estrogen, that kind of, that type of healthy tissue just slowly dissipates and, and isn't there as much anymore. So the tissue is dry, it doesn't stretch. Um, it tears easily, it's, mm -hmm. it's not healthy. So just like, you know, as we age and our face loses that elasticity and we do, things seem a little saggy, um, <laughs> and that's the other thing the laser can do uh, for, for tissue that's gotten stiff and, and non-flexible, it can give that elastic back to make things uh, more malleable, more comfortable, for example, with intercourse. Same with our face, we want it to be tighter and lift, we want that vaginal tissue to be responsive like that too. So not only will it help with the, um the discomfort that may come from mm -hmm. vaginal dryness, mm -hmm. it also will help, um, are you saying, to tighten the area? Yeah, so it's, a, it's an interesting, little... right? So we say uh, it makes it more comfortable to have intercourse in that it, it makes the tissue more elastic and accepting, but at the same time, some people actually have gotten tighter from the tissue drying out, and so that, that, that makes it, so it can be tighter, you know, we have a lot of babies, it gets a little looser, it can tighten it up that way, mm -hmm. and at the same time, it can also make it more elastic so it can open up as well. Who, quali who can qualify for this treatment, or is there people who don't qualify for this treatment? So really, the only people who can't have the treatment is, uh, are people who've had precancerous changes in that area, not mm. though, not abnormal pap smears. Some people think a history of an ab abnormal pap smear is a reason you can't have it. If you didn't actually have cervical cancer and certain kinds of treatments such as radiation treatment in the area. But if somebody has uh, vulvar neoplasia or vulvar type cancers or precancers, those are people who are not candidates for it. But it, it doesn't actually treat right on the cervix. It treats the vaginal tissue. Um, you can have this if you've had a hysterectomy or not had a hysterectomy. Um, you can't have it if you've had um, vaginal or you know pelvic radiation for any reason. So if you've had certain types of cancers uh, that you've had pelvic radiation for, you can't have it. But in short, most people can have this treatment. Most people are candidates for this treatment. And how do you know? I have never heard of this treatment my, yeah. my, myself. I how how does one? come to know about this? Do they go to their, for a woman who's like, uh, I don't know what's going on, I feel like something's going on, do you, do they get referrals from their primary care provider at Tri-City and they're, they're recommended or do they, they absolutely can. Some people um, can search in that. There's a Matt, uh, Mona, Lisa we, uh, Mona Lisa Touch website. You can check and see all the providers in your area. Um, I get a lot of referrals from primary care doctors. I like to do, uh, I like to go out in the community and do educational seminars on menopause in general and vaginal atrophy and just give a woman a chance to talk about it. Um, I do, you know, for example, breast cancer survivors, it's a big problem for them. A lot of the medications they take are anti-estrogens. So they may be very young with breast cancer and, and then their, their, their body in certain areas like their vaginal tissue becomes menopausal-like. And um, so 
I'm starting to try to reach out to all those groups to make it a known thing. It's definitely becoming more common. When I first heard about it, I was super excited because I'd never seen anything like this. And it's such a great idea because it's, a, it's an area in medicine that I wasn't always able to fix. I wasn't always able to fix the tissues with vaginal estrogen or over-the-counter lubricants, or some women couldn't have the vaginal estrogen, or even if they technically were cleared to have the estrogen from their cancer doctor because they had breast cancer or ovarian cancer, they were afraid to do it, and they just really didn't want to run that risk at all. And so now I have a treatment op option for all these women that, women that we didn't think we had an option for in the past. And what's the recovery time for, for something? That's the, yeah. that's the other really cool thing about it. Um, the treatment itself doesn't hurt. Uh, you feel you don't need any uh, numbing medication or anything in the vagina. It's so you just feel a vibration. <laughs> and I am menopausal, and I have had it done. So I am truly what? speaking from experience. Yeah, just a little vibration, and it's just a few minutes, and it just treats uh, the tissue circumferentially. And um, the external part, we put a numbing. Uh, we call it a BLT, topical benzocaine, lidocaine, tetracaine, but a BLT ointment on the outside. It sits there for 15 minutes before the treatment and that's for the vaginal opening and then the tissues on the outside because that's a big area of pain with intercourse. And then we wipe that off after 15 minutes. People do not feel a thing. If for some reason there's a little breakthrough area, I always say like a little rubber band snap in one, it's like a quick second and I felt that. So, but it's pretty rare for them to even feel that. Mm. Um, if they just get an internal treatment 24 hours later, they're, they can have intercourse if they want to. If you get an internal and external treatment, one week later, you can try intercourse if you want again. And again, like we've said in the past, intercourse isn't the prime goal for this. Mm -hmm. Some people will experience a relief of bladder symptoms within a week of the first treatment. So you're saying by doing this Mona Lisa laser therapy, mm -hmm. it can also help to um, your, your, bl your bladder. Yeah, so people, uh, one of the, when I was newer to the treatment and we knew it could help with bladder symptoms, but we were initially more focused on pain with intercourse when we were newly advertising it and, and learning about it. Um, but what we found is almost everybody was coming in and saying, I don't go, I don't get up to go to the bathroom at night anymore. Like huge, it's huge. We, I sleep through the night, including myself. I was up two times a night before the treatment. And then now I sleep through the night. It's, it's, it's great. Now, do you have to, or maybe every body is literally different. Do yes. you have to keep going back to keep getting right. rejuvenated? Right. <laughs> so the, the standard treatment is uh, three treatments, six weeks apart. Um, I have found for women who have more of a problem because it's been a long time since they've had treatment for this issue, um, I have done a fourth treatment for them. And some of the external treatments require uh, up to five treatments. But after those, that initial treatment, the first um, one, the first three treatments or four treatments, then you just come back once a year for a maintenance treatment to keep the tissue. And I'm finding as I'm starting to have the woman come back at the one year visit, um, they're just starting to know some of their symptom return maybe a month before the visit and um, then they're getting the treatment and, and it's holding them for that year. Okay, and is it's so the procedure isn't painful Correct. and you can return to normal activity. Literally, if you want, we have to do ice. If we do an external treatment, we do ice for about 10 to 15 minutes after the treatment. Um, and then you could go back to work if you wanted to. I personally say that's always a good reason to take the afternoon off, to have a little something something for yourself, go home, watch a movie, have some time to yourself. But really, if you had something to do, you could. Um, a good story for our office is two of us had it in the office, including myself one day, and we ended up taking a walk, um, and it was a New Year's Day for some reason, I don't know how we ended up doing this, but we ended up walking from um, Carlsbad all the way down to the Oceanside Pier and, and it rained. Not supposed to get wet after, but it happened, and I did fine. So, but we joke, you can go walk. I don't know how many miles you think that is. I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. But before we go, where can they find you in this Mona Lisa laser therapy? So I'm with Radiance OBGYN, and we are literally within walking distance of Tri-City Tri Medical Center. Dr. Penvosi, thank you. And if you want further information on women's health at Tri-City Medical Center, please visit tricitymed.org.